Welcome to this hub identification class. Today we are looking at uh, uh, this, we are identifying this hub that is called Rigoron canadensis, that is horseweed. It is basically known to help and support our bones. Uh, we must understand that the bones need three main nutrients and minerals, that is silica, the phosphorus, and the calcium. And then uh, uh, it also needs some foods that help to, uh, or some vitamins that helps to make sure that these minerals are maintained and utilized in your system. Like the vitamin C, the vitamin D, uh, the vitamin B6, and the folic acid. Uh, if we are not feeding on the foods that are rich even in magnesium and uh, foods that are rich in tin and uh, boron, selenium, our bones cannot be able to, to be strengthened. So this herb that is called, uh, that is called uh, horseweed, it is a kind to horse tail and uh, it is very beneficial for many uses, uh, for many needs of the body. It is used to treat diarrhea, internal hemorrhage, cholera, rheumatism, tuberculosis, bronchitis, inflamed tonsils, diabetes, menopausal symptoms, kidney and bladder conditions, eczema and ringworms, nosebleeds, hemorrhoids, stomach aches, ear aches, or headaches. And uh, we use the leaves mostly, leaf decoction. We use a handful of the, of the leaves, you crush them in, uh, and put in two cups of water and let it steep. Uh, it can be on the sun for four hours or overnight. Uh, and then in the morning you sieve and then you take in two cups a day, morning and evening. Uh, it's used against the headaches. Uh, when you take it in, the ear aches, you put a drop uh, a drop of the juice and squeeze from the leaves on both the ears. For hemorrhoids, you can uh, apply a squid, a, a, a fleet enema. You crush the leaves and then draw in using a syringe and insert it through the anal tract and let the person retain. For ringworms, they use fresh leaves to be rubbed on the air. In fact, it's very effective for skin problems, more so the ringworms. You rub it thoroughly on the ringworm for three days, the ringworm is gone. And at the same time, you need to be taking it in. For eczema, the same. For diabetes, it helps to remove the, uh, it helps remove the high cholesterol and then uh, allow the insulin receptors to receive, uh, 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 to receive insulin into the bloodstream. So for bronchitis, it is an expectorant, so it, it, it helps to expel the mucus as well as dilate the, uh, the, dilate the, uh, the respiratory cells. So for tuber tuberculosis and rheumatism, because of the high silica and calcium, it marinates the tuberculosis uh, bacteria. And so if you take it alongside, you use comfrey, one part of comfrey, one part of, of this herb and about a bulb of garlic and then you crush them well, give to someone with tuberculosis, and the person should be on the sun, should bask on the sun in the morning. After one week, the person should be feeling relief. It is also a go good for cholera and uh, typhoid and amoebosis if you take the decoction of the leaves. Uh, is uh, It helps to uh, to stop internal hemorrhage as well as external hemorrhage. If someone was having a serious uh, diarrhea, more because by cholera or dysentery, you take the fresh juice made from the leaves and you are able to avast that problem. If someone has a toothache, you put the fresh juice of it on, the, on, the, on, on your teeth. And... Uh, uh, sometimes for rheumatism or, or, uh, or uh, osteoarthritis, uh, you need to create a good, a good formula where you use the, uh, you use the leaves of this plant 
Comfrey, Acacia Leaf, and Burdock. And then you take that in, it's able to help the inflammation effect. And uh, the poultices made from it is used to treat burns and sore joints. Roots are used in decoction teas to treat menstrual complaints. It is an extremely good herb for the urinary tract, like the kidneys and the bladder. It's used to strengthen any prolapse condition of the body, e.g. bladder, bowels, uterus, veins, skins, and the like. Has some minor antiparasitic properties and one of the greatest help for increasing platelet production by the spleen. That is so important. We have two that help with the boost of platelet production. Uh, that is the popo leaf and this horseweed. Uh, if your platelet production are low in the spleen, even your red and white blood cells will be very low. So how do we know that there's less platelet production in our bodies when we constantly bleed on the nose? Anytime you've, you, you experience bleeding in the nose, you know that your platelet counts are very low. A very good herb for prostate inflammation and weakness. In fact, there was um, a, a, an old woman who was having uh, urine retention. And uh, what we used was that uh, three parts of this, a hostel and uh, one part of the avocado seed and uh, one part of stinging nettle, one part of golden seal, and taken in, the person in the evening was able to uh, to release urine normally, not with a catheter. And even singly, if you use it with the roots of uh, roots of stinging nettle, uh, you are able to actually help someone with the uh, with the prostatitis with the prostate that has been enlarged. Uh, used in the detoxification of the body, has diuretic properties, therefore very beneficial in relieving kidney congestion. And used to strengthen fingernails, uh, check thyroid and parathyroid. If you want to know that someone is having a thyroid problem, you look at the nails, they will be having black spots and they are eaten. They tend to be very thin, thin uh, subcutaneous, uh, uh, the, 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 the cuticles. Uh, the, the, the part that is uh, on the top is very small and it's, it is dented and ragged. That means that you have a problem with your thyroid. Uh, maybe your TSF or, or your calcitron is not actually in a balance, uh, balance form. So what you need to do is to make sure that, uh, uh, is to make sure that you give the right herbs. Uh, this horseweed is just one of them in strengthening the, the thyroid. And uh, the thyroid may be having different uh, complications. We have the Hashimoto disease, uh, where we are in subdivided into hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. In those conditions, you must know the type of foods that you give for someone with hyperthyroidism, overactive thyroid glands, and hypothyroidism and active thyroid gland. And then use herbs like kelp, use herbs like bagluid, and a lot of uh, cleansing herbs to make sure that the thyroid gland continue well. Sometimes you will have to go on a thyroxine uh, that will help to stabilize your FSH, uh, uh, your thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone is TSF, not FSH. Well, so that helps you today. Till next time, bye.